Hey, Bastish B here for 64K and welcome to another episode of One Man and His Machine. And today's profile is on Trevor Story, a game designer, graphic and concept artist and the driving force behind Icon 64. This is his machine of choice. Let's get to know the man a little bit better. Trevor Story hails from Newcastle, England and is a cover artist, concept artist, 2D and 3D video game artist and game designer. He has been working in the industry for over 30 years with close to 100 games to his credit, working on games for big companies such as Team 17, Ocean, US Gold, Iguana Entertainment, just to name a few, with titles such as Shadow Man 1 and 2, Robin Hood Defender of the Crown, Forsaken, never mind all the C64 titles like Barnsley Badger and Shadow of a Hawksmill, and so much more we're going to have a look at today in this video. He's also a very skilled concept artist with work covering album covers, book, movie and TV, game covers, magazine covers, but in this video we'll be focusing on his work put out by himself and a few core members of Icon 64 and all the games they have released during the 2010s on the Commodore 64. So today we're going to be having a look at all the games that Trevor Story has put out in the modern C64 era. Everything from 2012 right up to the end of 2020, so roughly about 22 games or so on the Commodore 64. I reached out to Trevor himself and he was kind enough to grant me an interview for this video so you'll not only be hearing my opinions on the games but you'll also be hearing his comments and thoughts as well. He also sent a whole lot of design stuff and uh, behind the scenes photos so you'll be seeing those as well. You've already seen a few of them so that's pretty cool. But let's get this video rolling and jump back to the beginning. 2012 saw the release of two games. First game we're looking at here is called Wonderland. It was an action adventure Zelda style game that was put out for the RGCD 16 kilobyte cartridge competition. For such a small game it's actually quite fun and plays really well. I just wish they had made an expanded version of this. I think people would really love that. I asked Trevor how he actually became involved in doing the graphics for this little gem. Georg was involved in a competition. I I think it was a 16k competition and he had a top-down kind of RPG idea um, and he approached us if I asked if I was interested in doing the graphics. I didn't have much space to work with, it was hardly any, any characters, hardly any sprites but um, yeah I went through and it was a good fun one to do and I think it turned out you know, really nicely for a little, little 16k game. And the second game for 2012 was the first big C64 game Trevor worked on which was Soulless which he contributed graphics to, along with Jorg Rottensteiner on code and Mikael Hastrup on the wonderful music score that you're listening to right now. It's a big sprawling platform adventure game with a fantastic graphic style, cool story with an epic intro and ending, and feels like one of those great early 90s C64 games. If you updated your C64 Mini or Maxi recently, you'll notice that this game was one of the new additions, so there's really no reason not to try it out. And here's the original map that Trevor designed for the game. And I asked him, as the game is pretty big in scope, how long was the development cycle for it? Um, we already had a nice editor on, you know, which was used on Joe Gun, which you can make elements and you could create rooms really quickly. So the actual start of the game, you know, we went off with the flyer we had the map done within, within about a week maybe two weeks and then Georg went off and he did something else um, I can't remember what, what else he was working on at the time um, and then this, that sort of went into a few months four or five months we didn't do anything on it and I sort of thought well that's it you know let's just leave it behind now and then one day he just came back and he says oh he has a demo and I had a look and he had the platform engine in you can explore the rooms and it was great so from that point you know what we got done really quickly I think within a couple of months. So from start to finish, it was maybe about a year, six months in the middle where, you know, we didn't really work on it. 2013 saw the release of two games. This year saw the release of two really fun games that clearly took the inspiration from TV shows such as Miami Vice, one of my personal favorite shows of all time, and the more contemporary Supernatural. So let's first look at Vice Squad, which is a fast-paced top-down spa hunter mixed with a bit of Chase HQ style game where you play a pair of Crocodile Tubs Vice 
stops, blasting bad guys and smashing them off the road to complete levels and missions. Trevor did the graphics and game design with Akim Volkers on code and Linus providing the pumping music score. It's a pretty underrated C64 game worth checking out. The other release was Guns and Ghosts, a game whose story is clearly supernatural inspired. It's another great little action platform game that has you taking out zombies with your twin barrel shotgun and was the first new era C64 game I played after getting back into the Commodore game and starting this channel. It's got a cool intro and another great music track by Richard Bayless and all these games can be purchased from Sartronic Software. I asked Trevor as a game designer how influenced is he by other media in his own game. So with the Vice Squad I was also a fan of Spy Hunter and the Arcades so I wanted to you know make something like that or something along those lines but instead of having it scrolling it vertically I wanted it you know, horizontal um, and it was heavily influenced by Miami Vice obviously and each, each of the roads was made out of tiny little, se little sections two screens along I think they were and then you could add them all together in different ways you know like a jigsaw and that was really fun to do the music on that was absolutely fantastic and then with Supernatural Georg had been working on it for quite a while and then I came in and I redid the art you know the sprites in the backgrounds you know with thought maybe it's a bad idea having it called after a TV show <laughs> so um, chucked around a few names and Guns and Ghosts came up and we both liked it so yeah so that's what it ended up staying as 2014 saw the release of one game this year we got one game but boy is it a good one Darkness is in essence an epic ode to ultimate play the game's 80s adventure game Saber Wolf you're an adventurer whose plane has crashed in the jungle and your girlfriend has gone missing it's your job to find her in this maze of jungle and temples it's a hundred screen adventure that has light puzzle elements lots of blasting action and has really nice lush graphics by Trevor a nice big map which this is his original map design as well for the game and coded and scored by the Vice Squad team of Volkers and Linus respectively whether you're a fan of Saber Wolf or not this is totally worth a play also if you got the cartridge version of this game you got a bonus game called Darkapede which is a fun little centipede style variation set in the darkness universe to have a little bit of fun with I asked Trevor about his odes to classic games Games, whether he's trying to improve on the originals because he wasn't satisfied with them or whether he's trying to introduce these classic styles to new C64 gamers. So a lot of games that I like to do and design are games in, in the style of things that I've really loved playing in the past you know it's like I love Draconis and I loved Apostle Mission so I did my kind of take on that with Solus and then obviously with Darkness it was Saber Wolf. Strange thing with Darkness originally means Stu were doing it for mobiles so it came out on, on iPhone and Android and I did all the art in 64 style so I just approached Achim and said you know do you fancy doing this on the 64 and he was like yeah sure that would be great and we were going to include the map but unfortunately we didn't have the memory so the original Android one had a, an in-game map that you could access so like these games aren't me, aren't me trying to make them better than the originals I don't think the originals need to be made better you know I love the originals it's just my take on that style of game 2016 saw the release of one game Next up we got My Life, which is a fun arcade style game similar to the arcade, Mikey, where you have to get Eugene to survive one week in his life so he can have a rest on the weekend. It's fast paced fun as you collect letters to form words which enable you to escape a level. Extremely colourful graphics with a great high res look, code by Volkers and another banging soul cross soundtrack that's as bubbly as you can possibly get and is still some of my favourite tracks of his that he's ever done. I asked Trevor about the making of my life. I always loved those early Imagine games, you know, with the yellow box art and like really cartoony with Mr. Wakelin artwork on the front, you know, like Mikey and the Comic Bakery and those kind of things. So I, w I wanted to come up with an idea of something along those lines. Um, and Mikey was, you know, was a fun one, um, but I thought, you know, let's make him older with no hair and a bit larger around the middle, as, as happens to most of us. So I designed, it, came up with a game and, and all the artwork in the rooms and everything. And, I think it was really quickly, it was about a week or a week and a half. And then I spoke to Achim Volkers, um, who I'd worked with on Vice Squad and Darkness already, and said, um, you know, do you fancy doing this one? And he was he was interested. You know, that seemed to come together really quickly. It was from start to finish, it was maybe two or three months. Yeah, that was really fast to work on. Music wise, spoke to Soul Cross and I asked him if he could do something in that imagined style, you know, the kind of loading, the ocean load, that sort of music where it was really jarry, um, Jean-Michel Jarry. And he came up with that and it was, you know, it was 
absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant music. So that was that was a real good fun one to do that one. 2017 saw the release of six games. 2017 has a familiar start with Rob's Laugh, which is basically a mod of My Laugh, put out as a bonus for the Project Hubbard Kickstarter campaign celebrating Sid composer Rob Hubbard's career in game music. The game is exactly like My Laugh except Rob's in it, and Ben Daglish, and various other C64 characters make an appearance. And what would a Hubbard game be without music by Rob himself, which he also composed? Awesome. Next was Downhill Challenge, a cool little epic style skiing game, made for the Forum 64 and Protovision game competition, which Trevor did graphics for. It's fun and addictive and reminds me of those old Atari games, just with way better graphics and audio. Barnsley Badger was next, an excellent take on the Monty on the Run styled UK platform games of the mid 80s, which I absolutely loved. Volkers was back for coding, with Andrew Fisher joining for an excellent soundtrack, and Trevor again on design and graphics, with another epic map as seen here. I asked him about adapting different graphic styles for different games, and he said, I've worked in the games industry since the mid 80s I did my first sprites for Tinesoft it was on a Winter Olympics game on the Commodore 16 I believe and then since then you know I've worked for US Gold and um, I've did a game for Ocean I worked for like Acclaim and Iguana I've worked on a few titles for Team 17 so your styles your styles really change art, art wise you know you have to do horror then you have to do cartoony and sports and things so that's spread into the 64 development. Um, when I come up with a game idea, the first thing I do is the main character. So the style is, yeah, that's that's right at the beginning. It doesn't evolve as, as the game goes on. It's That's kind of the first thing that I come up with. Next up was The Sky Is Falling, a very addictive five minute style Twitch game that I love messing around with. You basically have to survive being crushed by a giant Indiana Jones type rock, as well as the cave falling on your head. It's kind of one of those see how far you can get games. Trevor did graphics with Stuart Collier on code and Richard Bayliss back again for some tunes. Next was Bear Beware or Sleepwalker as it's also known, which is a very underrated C64 game that mixes elements of Jet Set Willy and Lemmings as you try to guard the little bear to bed without getting him murdered. It's very unique and fun and well worth a look, with Trevor again providing the lovely high res graphics and box art. And the final game for 2017 was Argus, a big old epic dungeon crawler that harkens back to games like Eye of the Beholder or Dungeon Master from the 80s with light RPG elements. It's a big and sprawling game, which led me to ask him about the making of Argus. I like to work on all, all different styles of games and I was a, I was a huge fan of Obitus, if you, if you remember that one on, on the Amiga when I was younger. And I thought, would it be possible to do something kind of in that style on the 64? So I had to play around with it, doing it in character mode, um, squeezing all the all the movements of the corridors and you know things into into one character set and he, yeah it sort of worked so I spoke I sp spoke to Akin Volkas and I said did you fancy having a bash at this one we'd already done a few games together already so he's always interested um, and he was yep yeah, yeah that you know that looks really good let's let's give it a go and I think it had f 1500 locations so. When I had to test that one, it was it was a real slog because we had to make sure that every room linked up to all the all the correct rooms. And then I spoke to Soul Cross again. Do you fancy having a bash of the music? And he was, yeah, yeah, of course. And I asked for the music in the style of Master of Magic, something along those lines. And you know, he came up with it, and it was great. So that took quite quite a while to test. I just remember looking at the map and all those numbers and just say, right, come on, let's get on with it. Let's get a test of the game. So that took, yeah, that, that took quite a long time to get done. 2018 saw the release of three games. This year's releases were all vastly different from each other, yet all quality in their own right. First up is Rocky Memphis and The Legend of Atlantis, which is an excellent flip screen action adventure game that's really quite unique. It's a bit Indiana Jones and a whole lot of Rick Dangerous as you solve puzzles while avoiding traps. If I had done a top 10 C64 games of 2018 lists back when I started this channel, this would have been number one. Top quality presentation, a tough but fair challenge, great story and more awesome tunes from Soul Cross. It's a must play C64 game for sure. Next was Organism, a game that oozes the style of the Aliens movies, as it's an action adventure exploration type game as you search a giant spaceship trying to find a way to escape. 
as it's slowly getting infested by aliens. It's fun and different, and I just love the graphic style and creepy music. It's just another all-round quality title. And I asked Trevor if it's his intention to always try out different gameplay styles in his designs for new games. I think we all like to work on different styles of games. It just keeps everything fresh, you know, that you're making something different each time. I wouldn't want to be stuck in the rut of just doing platform games. Um, even though we do love doing them, it, it is nice to try a hand at something a little bit little bit different every now and again. And the last game for this year was Sizzler, which was a game made in conjunction with the Zap64 annual Kickstarter. The game is a tough as nails flip screen platformer, where you are collecting data for a new game and returning it to the Archon64 guys to put the game together and hopefully win a Sizzler award in Zap64 magazine. Yeah, it's as meta as it can get. Awesome graphics and world design by Trevor with Stuart Collier on coding and Soul Cross again with the tunes. It's a pretty cool game that's only really let down by its extreme difficulty or at least I found it bloody hard. I asked Trevor how he met Soul Cross as he's such an important element of the Archon 64 brand. So the reason that we came to work with Soul Cross as much is I was working on an idea for a like a Metroidvania style game which was Hyperion and I designed it and had all the mapping all the sprites done and everything. I stuck some mock screenshots up on Lemon64 um, at the forum and you know he saw them and he was interested in doing the music. I think in the end he did about 16 tracks for that and they were, they were all really good and you know, a really good piece of music but unfortunately the game hit some snags and we ended up dropping it which is a real shame. Maybe we'll get back to it one day. Um, I would like to but yeah that's that's how we came to work with Soul Cross. 2019 saw the release of three games. First up is Chaos Generator, a cool variation on Pac-Man. It's simple fun as you have to collect all the music notes that your producer lost before the magnets get to them and erase all your band's songs. It's got that simple styled spectrum high res look, the same graphics that was used in Organism and I really like the style. It was also coded by Stuart Collier and Andrew Fisher makes a welcome return for another set of bopping cool audio tracks. If you like Pac-Man then you'll like this. Next was Run Demon Run, a surprisingly good endless runner style game. The reason I say surprising is because I'm really not a fan of this type a game at all, but for whatever reason I found myself playing this way more than I thought. The C64 has very few of these style of games, and its combination of cool graphics by Trevor, coding by Volkers, and Richard Bayless pumping out more earworm tunes, it's just totally one I'd recommend, especially if this style of game is up your alley. I asked Trevor where he met Coda, Stuart Collier, and whether working with a small group of people helps making these games easier to produce. So I worked with Stu originally, we uh, made a retro remake makes of of old games, you know, so we did a remake of Armalite, for example, and Dan Dare, and you know, we did, did like we even did an online Jet Set Willy, which for a while it was it was good fun. It was good fun. There was quite a few people playing it. But then I moved on to you know working on the 64 again, and I didn't really have the time to do retro remakes. And I I was always asking him to join, but he was he was I don't think he was that interested for a while. And then I'd I'd had a few games out. I'd spoke to him again, and he said, "Okay, I'll you know let's give it a go." So we ended up doing the skies falling. You know, he picked up really quickly how to, how to code on the 64. It was amazing, and it's nice to work. You know, I work with him a lot, and I work with Achim Volkers a lot, and Georg Rottensteiner, and it's nice to work with the same coders over and over again because you know that you know the strengths, and you you work well with each other, and they don't mind us hassling them every other day. Is is it done yet? Have you fixed this yet? Etc. So yeah, so it's really good fun working with the same people over and over again. The last game for 2019 was Age of Heroes, a brilliant side-scrolling hack and slash affair along the lines of Rastan Saga. I played the heck out of this game and enjoyed it so much. It has a massive map where you can take on levels in any order you feel like it, nice big chunky boss fights, tons of graphical variety in the stages and enemies, and the difficulty balance is just right. It really is a cool hack and slash which is a genre the C64 has never been particularly great at, generally speaking, but this sits right up there with the best of them. I asked Trevor about how Age of Heroes came to be. With Age of Heroes, I'd always wanted to make a hack and slash game along the lines of Rastan Saga, um, but instead of having an 8-way scrolling, it would just be left to right. And I wanted to make it easier because a lot of, a lot of people had asked if we could make some of our new games a bit easier for people who are playing them now. Uh, you know, their reactions had weren't quite as good as they were when they were younger. So yeah, so so that's how that one came about. I was really happy with how it turned out and we got lots of great feedback on it. 2020 saw the release of three games. 
And for our final year of coverage, we got a triple threat of cool fantasy and horror games. First is The Lord of Dragonspire, a game that came out technically at the end of 2019, available to Zap64 2020 annual Kickstarters, but got a wide release to the masses in early 2020. It's a fantasy action adventure game with light RPG elements that follows in the footsteps of the classic C64 game Master of Magic. It's good but won't appeal to everybody and it's a bit tough to survive the beginning until you level up a little bit. Regardless it's another bold stab at a genre they've never done which I absolutely love. Trevor on graphics and design, Stuart Collier on code and Jason Page with an epic 10 plus minute SID track which is excellent. With such a cool cover for it I asked Trevor about his contributions to games he's not involved with but has done artwork for. Over the years I've done all styles of art you know pixel art and then level artist and concept artist and, and that's led us to doing magazine covers and album covers and book covers and then Georg was releasing Joe Gunn and he didn't have a cover for it and I said look I'll do I'll do your cover and then Ken's at Cytronic Software contacted us and asked us if I'll be interested in doing a few more it's, you know that's carried on I've done um, I've done tons of covers now um, a lot of games I haven't worked on um, but it's good fun and I really enjoy it next up is Isle of the Cursed Prophet a super cool Zelda styled action adventure game set on an island where the goal is to resurrect your dead wife with the help of the cursed island secrets it's a great exploration game with simple puzzles and fun action. It's got nice high res graphics and a very atmospheric score by Soul Cross. And that intro has to be one of the C64's best ever produced and sets the tone magnificently for the game to unfold. He has Trevor's original map design which shows the scope of it. I think it's a perfectly sized game, not too long and tedious, but just enough adventuring for a totally memorable experience. I asked Trevor about his love for fantasy and horror and how these three 2020 games came to be. Yeah, we had three games out this year. The first one, which was technically last year, because it was part of the Zap64 annual Kickstarter, was The Lord of Dragonspire, which is obviously a take on Master of Magic. Um, I had the graphics on my hard drive that I'd done years ago, and we just sort of sat there. I didn't think that, that I would use them. But then we were asked if we could do a game for the Zap Kickstarter, and I thought, yeah, that one would be great. And Stu was up for it again, so we did that. And then Jason Page did the music, and an absolutely amazing piece of music. So that was a real good fun one to do. And then with the second one, Shadow of a Hawksmill, you know, you know, I've always been into Cthulhu and that mythos, and um, I wanted to make that style of, you know, just, just something to have that kind of feel to it. So I had it based around that, and then it used. The engine, more or less, from, from Legend of Atlantis, have adding some lightning and rain and things, and just to make it nice and spooky with black shadows moving around. So that round, so that that was a great one. And that was music by Soul Cross again. Stu did the coding on that one. And then the third one, Isle of the Cursed Prophet. Uh, I really loved the atmosphere that you got from the box art on the Spirit of Stones. Not so much the game, but the actual box art. The you know you got that huge book inside of it as well. It it had this kind of wicker man feel to it. So I wanted to do something like that. So I worked on a backstory with loads of spooky tales of this stra strange little island, and had had a real blast doing that one. It wasn't easy because trying to fit that huge map and then all the rooms in, in into one load was really tough. But um, yeah, we managed it, and I was over the moon with um, you know with how that one turned out. And last but very not least is my personal favourite game of the year for 2020, that being The Shadow Over Hawksmill, a brilliant flip screen horror adventure game in the HP Lovecraft mould, with elements of The Legend of Atlantis and a massive cool and intriguing story as well, and a brilliant world to explore and solve. It's just an excellent piece of work. The atmosphere with the rain and the dread-like tones of Soulcross's most atmospheric score make it a total winner in my book. 
excellent graphics by Trevor as always and Stuart Collier again on coding make this just a banger of a C64 game. And for the final main question I asked Trevor when did he actually get his first Commodore 64 and what was his first gaming experience for it? And how did he find himself developing games for an almost four decade old system? I got a Commodore 64 in about 1983 and the first game I got I think was International Soccer which I, I thought was absolutely amazing at the time. I think over the years my favourite was was whiz ball because it was it was so original there was nothing like it I, d I don't think there's been anything like it since it looked great it sounded great um you could play two players on it it was fantastic i think over the years moving through the consoles you know and i've worked on them you know i've worked in the games industry for 30 odd years now i always missed those days of those really simple pixels the simple backgrounds you know um and i just i really wanted to get back into it so i believe i did a loading screen for joe gun in the late 2000s which i really enjoyed doing and then i was approached to do the sprites in the backgrounds for edge grinder which was a really short game um for a competition or something and i really enjoyed doing that <clears throat> and relearning it again um and then i had an idea for a game which was the original solus which i approached georg rochsteiner asked him if he fancied doing it and he was yeah he was interested so we started working on that so that's how i got back into doing games on the commodore 64. And if any of you guys have watched my top 10 videos from 2019 and 2020, you'll know that Archon 64 fared very well. So if you want some more information about them, please check those out. So I was also able to ask Trevor about a whole bunch of the Archon 64 games that are coming out in 2021. And here's what he had to say. Yeah, we've got a few titles next year. That, that'll be out, hopefully. It'll be starting with Arcade Days, which is a collection of 18 mini games. You know, you've got like three Pac-Man style, three Space and Earth style, three Centipede style, etc. And that's got a music again by Mr. Sal Cross. Actually, I think, I think he's doing the music on all our releases next year. So yeah, that's out. That should be out first. And then we'll have Age of Heroes 2, and that I would imagine will be later in the year. And that's more like Rygo. You've got a larger map to explore. It's more kind of, you know, Metroidvania, I guess. You can unlock areas and you've, you've got huge bosses to fight. That'll be later in the year. And then we've got Solus 2, which we seems to have been working on for, for years now. For, for ages. But that is so close. We're just working on the final boss fight. And then that'll go into testing. So that may be mid next year, hopefully for a release. And then we've got um, a Dragon Punch, which is a kind of a kung fu master style game 10 levels 10 bosses lots of moves yeah so that'll be mid next year probably so there's lots to come out next year and then a lot more the year after because i've got lots more ideas that i've designed and i hope you enjoyed that little video i just want to thank trevor again for granting me the interview and also providing all that cool behind the scenes stuff i've left a link to cytronic software in the video description you can get 99 percent of these games from there even if you just buy the digital version, which is only a few dollars for most of these games, it helps support the modern era of C64 gaming. So if you haven't, throw them a few bucks, you know, get some awesome, awesome games. And that's it from me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. If you can like and subscribe, they'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.